everything is electric, or my body is electric, yes. <laughs> so I will uh, read you um, a text from the book that was written uh, 2016 and is based on the research on the uh, sonosphere of the protests that were, were going in Warsaw. Uh, we were a group of uh, artists forming kind of a collective critical band ensemble and uh, we were examining the sound culture of, of a protest and uh, the possibilities of amplification and maybe alternative way and um, our, uh, as a protester, relations with the, with the power and the, the, the means of production. So my text is called uh, More Bark, More Bite. And it's, you can refer it to the, the famous um, speech of, um, uh, of a president, uh, uh, of American President uh, Roosevelt, um, he said, um, uh, I think he said this joke saying like uh, American dog is asking a Polish and Russian dog, how long you need to bark and howl to get the meat? And Polish dog will say, but what is the meat? And the Russian dog will say, and what is barking means. So <laughs> in order to to get the meat, we need to bark and we need to hold. And this context is um, actually is placed in the context of the of a black protest and uh, the feminist uh, movement um, against the very restricted uh, law in Poland now with a new government that is extremely like right and uh, is trying to take in control of a female bodies like completely. All playing can be seen as an extension of singing. The voice and this, its extensions represent the musical dimension of men, women, children and animals. Cornelius Cardi. Now close your eyes and listen. Obviously, you can't close your eyes and keep reading this, but try to imagine my voice. Is it a sensual voice of a telephone sex operator? Is it nice and cool, like an airport announcer leading you to your gate? I want this voice to guide you and arouse your curiosity. I want it to become your fetish. I will recall the tale of Pythagoras, who taught his students while hidden behind the curtain. Throughout the five years of study, his pupils never saw the source of the master's voice. The phenomenon of the voice decoupled from the speaker is what Michel Chion, borrowing from composer and music concrete scholar Pierre Schaffer, called the acousmatic voice. For decades, a voice heard through radios and loudspeakers commented on events, called, uh, called for action and pointed out enemies. A voice that millions thought was their own, the voice of the crowd. Moments before the election, Don Donald Trump's ally, Ben Carson, replied to a tough question from an SNBC journalist by saying to the program's host, can we turn that lady's microphone off? A few months earlier, in the middle of Europe, a female tenants' rights activist had her microphone turned off during a city hall committee meeting. Still, she didn't stop speaking and shouted out her demands to change the city's policy. Public speaking has been a male domain since ancient times. A woman speaking publicly is a phenomenon from between two worlds, a non-woman, an androgen. 
Her alien sound irritates the audience. Antique writings do not usually stress the lack of content in the female speech, but rather its acoustic quality. The female voice is compared to the sounds made by animals, such as cows and dogs, and is perceived as a noise, a disturbance. The art of rhetoric, speaking about grave matters, requires one to master a deep male voice. Margaret Thatcher, who at the beginning of her political career was often forbidden from speaking in the name of the party because she possessed the shrill voice of a housewife, knew that well. The Iron Lady's voice was calm, strong and deep. It was the voice of authority. The most famous and infamous tones of British politics were the effect of years of training which the British Prime Minister received from the Royal Theatre College voice projection teacher. Let's imagine an immigrant trying to learn English language and to lose the accent which betrays his origin, just as in Katharina's Jailer, the perfect sound work. Thatcher, despite having the privilege of being born white and British, as well as speaking flawless Queen's English, had to get rid of her female sound, which betrayed not quite her sex, but the existence of what had been expelled from the public sphere. The abstract voice of authority, so overdone as to become a mockery of the blind trust we place in it, is Laurie Anderson's vocal mask. The American artist uses a vocoder and various effects which lower her voice to create an alter ego, Fenway Bergamot. The ancient Greeks had two words for life, zo, which stood for life in itself, primal and wild, the opposite of Thanatos, and bios, the life on an individual, a period of time ending is death. Georgia Gamben considers these two words with the context of biopolitics. Bios is a life within the political realm, the actualization of life within the limits set out by the community. Zo, on the other hand, is life excluded from the community and in its exclusion, given a foundation allowed to exist. The excluded serves as a mute, invisible substrate holding up the political form. This mechanism of inclusive exclusion is the foundation of Western politics. During the black protest on October 3rd, 2016, tens of thousands of women across Poland came out on the streets to protest against a proposed law banning abortion. In their comments, many members of the ruling party accused the opposition of dehumanizing woman. We won't allow Polish women to be dragged out into the streets, said one female member of parliament. Polish women are not cattle or dogs that you can just drag out somewhere, wrote woman in the internet. In his Metamorphoses, Ovid recounts the story of an Athenian princess Philomela who was raped by Therios, the husband of her sister Procne. In order to hide the truth about his crime, the king of Thrace cut out the girl's tongue. This way, Philomela was raped again. She was silenced, deprived of a symbolic structure and a part of her body. A new means of communication was born from this rape of her freedom. The princess wove patterns in cloth that revealed the brutal truth of what had been done to her. When her sister Procne received the cloth, Peplos, her rage was unspeakable. She couldn't find the right words to express it. The language of her father was unable to encompass her pain and indignation. Her revenge was terrible. She fed her husband the son's flesh. Transgressing the patriarchal order and forcing Therus, to undergo the female experience of carrying another human being with him. As a woman, Philomela had no political rights, but remained an Athenian citizen. This reminds me of a commentary by the Indian writer and activist Arundhati Roy 
on the tragic events which took place in Delhi in 2012. She said that these events received wide attention only because the victim was a member of the middle class. Innumerable women who experience sexual violence never speak out. The silence of victims is a silence caused by the weight of complicity. It seems that the social order is broken not by the rapist act, but by the victim's testimony. Likewise, how can we give a voice to animals and our abused planet? I keep tabs on public gatherings of different groups. I also record and analyze their sonospheres. During the first refugees welcome events in Warsaw, which took place in September 12, 2015, and was a way of showing solidarity with the wave of refugees coming into Europe. I wore headphones connected to binaural microphones, which meant that I heard everything happening around me in the great detail. After the peaceful demonstration ended, the streets were taken over by radical opponents of hospitality. They were superbly prepared. Most of them were football fans with experience of chanting in support of their teams. The slogans they shouted out sounded like revelations, immutable and absolute fruits. The massive outbursts were accented by the exploding fireworks. They were united in a single universal voice, a terrifying voice filled with hatred and mixed with fear. Yet, paradoxically, the march had within it a huge revolutionary power, the power of the human mass that can be heard for miles without any electroacoustic amplification. This extreme acoustic experience made me ask myself, can we make our demands of open borders, basic women's rights, and autonomous constitutional tribunal better heard? I go out onto the streets with these epistemological questions bouncing around my head. Who are we and what do we want? What is our voice? The aforementioned the aforementioned black protest became an impulse for action. I decided to hold a vocal warm up before the demonstration, just as you would before a theatrical performance. Because the voice is a bridge between the private and the public, the inside and the outside, myself and others. Sound rooted in corporeality, something called fawn and the language, logos, my animal nature, zo, my story and my social training, bios, make up my individual voice. I wrote an invitation for the pre-protest warm-up. I decided to call the event Mobak Mobite, ironically. After all, barking is the sound that dogs make. Girls, ladies, lasses, women, mermaids, gorillas, all of you, because of the upcoming demonstration, I'd like to invite you to an exercise session, a warm-up for our voices, which we'll use to fight for our rights. For centuries, women were kept silent without the right to vote. I also took a long, it also took a long time until we gained the right to speak publicly. The voice of women appeared in the public sphere thanks to the suffragettes who decided to give testimony to their oppression and their desire for change. Women's voices had a huge impact on what happened during the Arab Spring. Let's practice voice emission, being present in the body, breathing, being together, being a voice. It may not be beautiful, it may not be perfect, but it's loud and it's our own. Let's try the human microphone technique used by the Occupy Wall Street protesters. Let's remind ourselves of the power held by the voices of our great grandmothers, the power of the traditional white open voice, the power of Slavic women. Let's create a community of women who are not afraid to speak, shout and sing, women who can be heard. After the warm up, we will go to the protest together and I will publish all the chants here soon. This is just the beginning. If you like the event, I would love to do it before every demonstration. 
for me, the two-hour warm-up warm before the black protest was an exercise in probing and setting up a common voice for women. I chose exercises based on different methods, which I've learned over many years of vocal training, but rejected the model of striving for mastery. I managed the time we had in a way that allowed every participation find her voice, use it, add it to the shared sound, and enjoy it with others. Feel good by taking decisions, by trying different options, by always searching. Policjanci, bądźcie z nami! These uh, sounds were from from the protest in July, and I must tell after after almost two years of um, observing closely the protest, people are for the first time really loud. <laughs> and, uh, it's completely different, like a sound event that it was two years ago. Like I don't know, maybe it was already too much and people like emotionally burst up with uh, wi with this um, kind of, I don't know, desire to, to resist. But reading this text um, that um, I wrote two years ago, I want to somehow reflect and continue because mm, um, the last words are about the warm up and um, the vocal techniques that um, I start developing and, and using in um, numerous workshops. And I see now that um, this statement of not making a formation, leaving a lot of space for for the participants, for for the people that um, are coming to the workshops, to find their own voices, own way, is still working for me. And through these um, two years, I never had this will to create um, like staging or um, a performance that is that is written and then um, done on the streets. Mm. And maybe, um, I was thinking a lot about it, maybe it's kind of um, mm, of a cautious, cautiousness um, <coughs> of aesthetizing politics too much that is very dangerous as you all we all know. It's what Walter Benjamin will write about and it's um, when you watch uh, the, the videos, the footage, from Communist People's Republic of Poland. Um, the all the marches are very militant and very very much calculated as a, as a shows and the spectacles. Um, um, I th think this is 
this is not the way for for us and um 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 I imagine I'm closer and closer um what is us actually <laughs> what what I mean um telling you us um so um there is um there is a term in uh, in grammar I, it's called uh, incoactivity and it means the beginning of the process something that is about to start to be mm, done or 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 it's it's a very specific state um and I like this word, and I, I think it's um, something uh, what what I do and I research is about that. Mm. Exercising together before demonstrations and around demonstrations and without um, this uh, specific uh, context too. Um, it it gives um a great pleasure and a great opportunity to to be together uh people that are coming are mainly amateurs that never they were never voicing out anything beside of like speaking um and there are many times like i don't know 50 people coming to the to the room and um i will lead the, the exercises um uh, in mainly what we can call uh, like a vocal improvisation mm, and it's um i believe very much in in the revolutionary power of of improvising it's um also i will quote again the the composer cornelius cardio but he said um in improvisation is very important to be open to your own errors and to the er errors of the other person and also if you have nothing to give just receive just take it mm. so this is exactly what what makes the the feeling of togetherness and um and the feeling of um of being close and uh, the kind of relations we do, but of course, to be honest, it's not so so natural and easy. Um, I always give this big um, trust. I have a trust in people, so um, always doing like completely free improvisation. But then I will slowly introduce some tools that can are uh, the tools that are useful to observe the timing, the space, the relational value of, of sound, um, some visual or architectural um, imagination, um, the tools that can help a decision making in improvisation, like how much space you want to take or how much space you want to leave for the others. There is um, a very um, famous Polish architect, Oskar Hansen, and he he designed an experimental mm, Polish uh, radio, national radio studio. And it was designed like you can move the panels of the wall depending which space you want to create in order to have a sound, a specific sound. He also designed... Um, a pavilion for Warsaw Autumn Festival, and it was never built. But you can see on the on the picture, mm, the audience is not there sitting. You can mm, freely move, roam around the space. There is a, a bridge above the orchestra place, and many different heights and places you can sit, stand, or even lay down. So Oscar Hansen also has a, a book of um, very primal educational like exercises. Um, it starts with a with a white page, and the page is given to a students, and you make your interve intervention on the page. You can tear it or 
or make a shape or, or, or a hole or something, and it goes in the in the circle, and you can add something from you. So um, uh, it was an exhibition in in Warsaw in uh, MoMA, and it was about his architecture. And um, I prepared the workshops of like transposing his architectural exercises into sound. So you can do the same, not with a, with the plastic material, but the plastic material, the fabric of the voice or the sound. Um, there are there are there are many uh, different and beautiful techniques. Um, um, I, I feel very lucky that I had the chance to follow the people I really admire and and look for my own masters and teachers. One of um, of the teachers was Pauli Paulino Oliveiros. I I met uh, like I don't know seven years ago and uh, learned a lot from her and also um, a practitioner of uh, um, community arts, um, a British artist, Nick Clements, um, that uh, he, he used to work in 60s with the miners, and uh, he works with different, different uh, numerous groups of, uh, of people. Mm. And yes, combining this, um, many different approaches. Uh, the approach of community art will be to create together, to have a simple joy, and uh, it's more like forgetting everything and, and coming back to the state of the of a child that is is finding um, a, a creative element in everything that is around. And the approach of Pauline that is. Uh, a deep listening and very close yeah. listening that actually can be an uh, excellent ground for resistance too because um, actually by listening we are amplifying things too. Um, we can hear um, better but hear also what we want to amplify that's, um, that's inside like you know hearing the, hearing the th thoughts and also there is this um, neurobiologist, Antonio Damasio, that um, um, he, he, he also um, pointed out that by observation of your body reaction, um, you can see that your body is like a very sensitive receiver and recorder. Everything that, that is happening, all the experiences, are stored, recorded. So when you know how to observe it and read it, uh, he said you can impregnate yourself to um, um, influence of the false authorities. And this is very interesting um, to how amplification on one side can be yeah, being loud <laughs> and amplification by being silent too. Um, there is um, a legend or a story I heard uh, from uh, my Polish friend. She she was there during the um, uh, the end of uh, the communist era, and she told me, uh, imagine this this picture. There are um, this military police chasing a young student, a protester, uh, with a, this gun, the rubber sticks, and they hit him. And uh, during this time, the, the military police was also high on drugs and amphetamine. So they are very um, devoted to what they are doing at this moment. And there is a lady with a, with a baby in the, in the trolley. And she sees that scene. And she starts screaming like, like crazy. Like this very powerful voice is coming out of her, of her mouth. And they hear that. And they stop. And they run away. So uh, for me, this is a legendary picture that how much the, the human voice can be um, like a sonic weapon or the turn turn out uh, point. Observing the, the protest for, for, for the two years, um, um, I don't know, when I'm on the street, um, it is like a performance, or it is uh, like a concert. Um, there are a lot of sonic effects going on. The, the, the resonance on the wall, 
the echoes, the, the amplification of the, the spaces um, of the certain like, of building materials mm, and other people. And two years ago, people were really silent. They will not open the mouth. Mainly it's connected to a um, to kind of education that um, we don't scream because we are very well educated and only, uh, you know, the low lives they, they scream, or the football fans, or the Nazis, or whatever. And we are we are intellectuals. We don't use also it's aggression. It's it's uh, it's a violence. So we d we don't we don't do this. So then the gap is 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 there. So you can you can have on extreme one extreme is a is a, is a right wing and this loudness and the, the wall of sound. And on the other side you have another extreme that is like neo liberal kind of ennui or or, uh, or uh, passivity, like uh, the state you say, I can't do anything about it, or uh, our um, protest doesn't bring any, any effects. So in this gap, I think there is a lot of uh, things to, to do and uh, to we can do. Mm, and I think during these two years, a lot of uh, things happened too. And I was... Um, uh, uh, promising to the people that I will, I will, t I will uh, exercise with them a human microphone uh, strategy uh, from Occupy movement, and we did, and it's very, mm, very pleasant and very powerful way actually of communication. And uh, during this uh, protest in July of um, uh, for the, for the tribunal and the s um, justice, um, me and few friends we were like guiding like i don't know like 2000 people from one place to another just by by giving the message like like we are going to the senate now pass it pass it and pass it and people start learning that and repeating this and you can see this like enormous mass of people uh, making turn and uh, it was really <laughs> um, really really powerful and mm, when when you think like that, like um, mm, that your voice is heard, but your colleague and and it goes like the circles on the water. This is very powerful image. It's much more powerful than the megaphone. That the the very poor acoustically amplification systems on the protest because it's it's really uh, not working at all. Uh, the speakers are, are not really well prepared to to serve um, these purposes, and the voices often um, really um, unheard. Um, we also tried another participatory method um, because also like people go to the protest like to a specta to spectacle, and they hear, oh, I can't hear anything from the loudspeakers so when I go home. Or they they are um, very easily. Uh, bored and distracted and uh, not engaged um, this way. Uh, so we, we were trying to introduce micro-broadcasting that is very popular method used in stadiums and during the religious uh, pilgrimage. Um, so we have like a simple radio transmitter on the stage and um, you can receive uh, the signal, I don't know, to your phone or to your portable radio. Um, uh, and, uh, and hear exactly what is going on the stage. Mm. And yes, because um. <laughs> um, also a microphone is changing people, and um, this voice of authority, and um, yeah, the voice from the loudspeaker is a, is a different voice. I mean, it's um, it's there, you know. <laughs> so it requires completely different training too. Um, I also um, also did it with with uh, my 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 friends, feminist uh, um, organizations. It happened that I observed they are very like um, mm, good uh, good speakers and lecturers, but when they come to the microphone, something is changing. They are they are much more shy and they are much more like. Uh, stupefied by by the fact of having this power, actually. So I do workshops also with the microphone. So 
try to stand by yourself or something that you have to state, like because now I'm really well heard, so um, I'm saying kind of my my truth to you. So uh, <laughs> this, um, I think this also requires a training, like everything. Is um, also as I read, um, these football fans they are really amazing, like singing together, but they. They do that like twice in a week. Or they they meet and they they have uh, this choir and uh, they they sing together. So um, I started to do the same. I mean, let's let's learn from the other side too, like uh, the good things, like um, the unison. I mean, we will n never be the one voice, and that's the good thing. We believe that we are um, we 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 live in democracy. Everything is plural. We we have pluralism. So. We will never sound like uh, like this, but at least um, at least we are trying, and um, maybe also by improvising, this changed the situation ch because um, yeah, it's it's um, it's a different process um, than um, than performing the one voice. Mm. Actually, it happens a lot during the the July protests. We were making uh, peaceful demonstrations, sitting in front of the uh, Polish parliament from morning till night and again and again and again. There were like tents and uh, thousands of people came from across the country. Um, I realized very, very fast that I don't want to be heard by the police so because police were kind of aggressive and uh, they were grabbing people out from the streets, putting in the cars, arresting, I don't know, putting fines and stuff. I decided I really want to be untouchable. So I, I sit down and I start like singing, making making sounds and using a megaphone as a, as a, mm, like a musical uh, uh, instrument. Uh, from time to time there, there were politicians of the opposition coming and saying like, please give me this megaphone, I want to say something. And I said, no, 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 this is, this is a trumpet now. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you want to play it, I please do this. But uh, no uh, agenda now. <laughs> And uh, this also works, um, the music made by spontaneous act, made out of the, the political slogans too. Because normally the slogan sounds like Solidarność jest kobietą. Solidarność jest kobietą. It's very, <laughs> you know, very dull, so we will rather sing it like Solidarność jest kobietą. Solidarność jest kobietą. Solidarność jest kobietą. Solidarność jest kobietą. And so on. And then uh, some people will add some like beatbox, I don't know, or, or kind of rhythms. And uh, and this, yeah, it's a little trumpet on the megaphone. And then you have this orchestra, it's becoming a techno. Then this is raving for two hours and, and stuff. And uh, uh, this is a form of resistance too, like having a good time actually on the street when, when protesting and, and feeling safe. I don't know how much time we have. Zero. Yeah. Okay. I can I can talk for hours. I really like <laughs> <laughs> love it. But uh, I think we uh, we will uh, I will finish now and um <laughs> with, <laughs> with with without conclusion but uh, we will uh, come back in the in the discussion yes <laughs> thank you very much